edition of the Cryptid Consortium podcast. Uh-huh. This is going to be episode eight, five for the season. Wow, uh, already we got an uh, interesting episode uh, for you tonight, Nick. You want to tell them what we're covering, and then I'll get into it a little bit. All right, and uh, how you doing, Gary? Hanging in there, bro? I'm hanging. I'm uh... all right. <laughs> Fighting tooth right. and nail. Well, well t- tonight's uh, cryptid is the devil monkeys. Now, the devil monkeys are a nasty group. Uh, they're considered to be a subtype type of the Bigfoot. They're not Bigfoot. They're a subtype now. Um, they're usually found in North America, specifically Alaska and Western uh, parts of Canada. But, but variants are found often throughout the world. Yes. Um, also in the United States, for just to name a few places, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Yeah. Um, the devil monkeys, they usually resemble baboons, and they stand about, well, this is what eyewitnesses have said, anywhere from three to five feet. Uh, they have shaggy canine faces. Uh, they're very quick and agile. They have uh, baboon-like cr- uh, features and uh, powerful kangaroo-like legs with three-toed razor-clawed feet, uh, tiny pointed ears, and a long bushy tail. I mean, that's something that separates them from something that people confuse them with. They, a lot of people confuse them with the Gugway. Uh, Gary, if you could just throw a picture of that Gugway up. Uh, Now, the big difference is a Gugway is is a type of Bigfoot. A gugway is generally, Jay, what, about eight to 10, 11 feet or eight, bigger. Eight feet, eight, seven and a half or bigger. Yeah, or bigger. And they're, they're Bigfoot. I mean, we're, we're talking about a thousand plus pound creature. And gugway translates by the First Nation people, it translates into uh, face eaters. Uh, they're, they're way bigger than the, uh, the devil monkeys. Yeah. It's not Gugway coming up. But there, no, 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 not that one. That's that's a devil monkey. Yep, that's a devil monkey. Okay, let me. He's a little you guy. Told me you're marking. That was the one you sent. No, the one below it. The one below it. Okay, give me just a second. Yeah, but that was a devil monkey. That's a good example of a devil monkey, and uh, from a Describe that was drawn the, from a the, uh, eyewitnesses report. The gugway was the side the side view of the great big one. Yeah, it was right underneath that one. Well, I don't have, I've got to pull it up in the file. Well, you could you pull it up. I mean, we can show them all. We're going to show them all. So Yeah, yeah. In that any one. case. That one. Oh, there it is. There's the Gugway. And I mean, you can see big difference. Huge, humongous, yeah. giant creature. Uh, it doesn't have that canine-like features. Uh, it doesn't have small pointy ears. That one has just ears on the side of the head. Yeah. But here's your Gugway. And generally, well, I've, I have found in my research... And in speaking with some First Nations people, and by First Nations people, everybody, if you, in case you don't know it, I'm speaking of the uh, Native Canadian Indians. Yeah, uh, that's they're referred to First Nations people. They're they're the ones that actually will talk with me. And I have a cousin-in-law who's a First Nations person, uh, Indian, and uh, he's told me many a story about the Gugway and uh, things that he's learned from his grandparents and from his parents also. So and they don't even they don't like to talk about him here, Nick, either. I told you even my relatives have a hard time talking to me about him. I'm surprised they won't talk with you because you're you're part what Mohegan? Oh, they do, they do, they do, but they don't like to. They don't <laughs> like you well because they're superstitious. If you talk about something that might appear, I know, but as far as as far as I go in my travels, I've been out to the Colorado, down to New Mexico, Arizona. Texas, a lot of times, trying to speak to Native Americans, they 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 will boom. I mean, absolutely shut me down, walk away, will not talk. Well, a couple and, of and I asked a uh, a young lady over there who was working in one of their uh, quickie food marts uh, after I had tried to speak to a Native American person in Arizona, um, and I asked her, I says, why did he just blow me off like that? And she goes, you're white. Because they're not going to speak to you. And she said that, she goes, besides, they're superstitious. If they if they speak about it, you know, it'll appear. 
you know, what they're, what, what you're trying to talk to them yeah. about. And uh, specifically, I was trying to talk about uh, skinwalkers and oh, the dog yeah. man. And yeah. he didn't want to hear it. He just, yeah. the guy just turned away and walked away. That was it. Darn right. was you got to respect it, you know. They'll, they'll talk more about Bigfoot and Gugway than they will skinwalkers or, uh, uh, like you said, the dog man or down here, we've even got things called Steginis that, that they won't talk about because it calls them in. If you mention, cause it's more of a mythical right. uh, deal, but a couple of things, uh, just a quick thing I wanted to bring up on the, on the devil monkey in the research that I was doing, you know, first thing popped up, of course, like y'all were saying is the Gugway, but there was a, a broad spectrum of, I, I, I would, I would personally say that the devil monkey is just a, like a wider term for a, a bunch of different, because it seemed like wherever you went in different areas, they was, like you said, ranging from three to five feet tall. Uh, right. That's real common down here in the South, which that, some of the, the and I'll get to in a second, I'll, I'll get to that when it's my turn, but I was just going to say that I think that the devil monkey is just more of a, uh, a, a broad term name that maybe we have more than one species you know, in like different areas and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll get more into that later. It's just yeah. like Sasquatch or Bigfoot, you know, we, we, we do know that there's different variances and the same with, with right. Delta. So I think that the devil monkeys per se could be more of a more broad terms because uh, you was talking about the Gugway. I'm going to pull up the next picture. Uh, the only known real non, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it wouldn't be animated, but sketch. The only actual photo of a Gugway that I've ever heard of in my 23 years of uh, research, and since you're on the Gugway, and uh, Nick, as soon as I mentioned that, I don't clicked in you and Jeremiah's heads. Let me pull that up right. Is the Beast of Seven Shoots? Yeah, yep. very famous yep. with the snout and. Uh, well, if I can find it, I don't know where all my stuff went. Uh -huh. Well, you make them, make just so we don't have dead air, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to bring it up. Yeah, go ahead and keep talking. I I'm mean, bringing it up. You're talking about you know, it. In researching this, I mean, I, I found that the first reported encounter was in 1934 in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. And at the time, it was reported in yeah, national newspapers. And that's important to note. I mean, national newspapers actually published this. Mm -hmm. Had a, a whole slew of artists' rendition of uh you know pictures in the newspapers from the eyewitnesses and i'm saying eyewitnesses and and they interviewed the eyewitnesses now here gary is is pulling up a uh, a picture of uh the gugway did they say where this was from because generally uh, i found uh, i found uh, uh, eyewitness reports in uh eastern canada anything on the uh the location on this i'm, I'm pulling it up now Give me just a second. Folks, I'm a little bit off my game tonight. No, I'm, I'm wondering if I have this little program on my phone and I'm wondering if I take a picture of it with, uh, with my phone, if it'll, uh, if it'll do it. Uh, I can't eh. see that screen share. It's not working. <laughs> I, I pulled it off real quick. <clears throat> But you can imagine back in 1934, it really upset the people down there in, in Tennessee and reporters were coming from all over the place and they it, it spread throughout the whole country. Because I, I found uh, in researching it, I found reports of it in, in Arizona. Uh, what was uh, the physical stature of that one in 1932 that you was talking yeah. about? But this remember? is the Gugway here that, that we're talking about. I was talking about the uh, devil monkeys. I no, mean, I'm it was found in Arizona, New Mexico newspapers i Utah. mean it was all over it was very it was a very popular thing you know another thing about the uh the devil monkeys while you're still looking that up it says eyewitnesses now this is quoted from the newspaper eyewitnesses said that the beast could jump 20 feet so you know witnesses have also noted that the devil monkeys were seen moving on two feet and on all fours and they're really quick agile and and fast as all uh and they noted there was something else that they noted is that they had long fangs i think we have one picture in there uh gary of a devil yeah. monkey with long fangs oh I, I pulled up more but uh yeah seven shoots in quebec is seven shoots waterfall and there's actually what this is is a still of a video uh, uh -huh. but i can't 
I can't really pull up the video because it's copyright. But uh, let me pull up the one with the fangs for you. And share screen. There we go. There's the fangs. Now, in uh, in my study of zoology, that does look an awful lot like a uh, baboon. All right. Hold that, uh, hold that thought, my friend. Keep going. Okay. And and if you've ever seen a baboon, you know you can you can tell they got they have fangs that are really huge. However, we're in the wrong continent to have baboons running around the country. We say that. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. <laughs> There you go. Here's here's your here's your picture of uh, what a baby baboon. Uh, no, that's full size male. That's a boar boar baboon, but they can have, get up to three. I was going to get into this later. Uh, they can get up to three inch long teeth. And yeah. Get up, where y'all's talking three to five feet tall? I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, go ahead. You know how I do. We'll do that in a little bit. Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Well, that's basically where my my research took it. I was going to throw it over to you guys for for your observations. But uh, yeah, the, the baboons are, are noted to be in the animal kingdom or in the ape kingdom, you know, the one of the fiercest of, of the uh, apes, of the primates, Absolutely. you know, except for a, uh, a, male, a male bull gorilla or silverback, something like that, which is probably about 15 times stronger than a male bodybuilder, yeah. you know, or a, yeah. a male, actually a male power lifter. Let's put it that way. Power lifters, uh, generally go for a lot of strength and power. Even I mean, I've, I've been to a zoo, uh, Jesus, about five years ago now, and uh, there was a truck tire, and the gorilla went up to the truck tire, picked it up, and started squeezing it like an accordion. I mean, like it was like nothing. I guess that's his exercise. Did we lose Jay in the, uh, in the meantime? No, I'm here. He just turned All right. the camera off. Your picture got turned off. Trying uh, to save some bandwidth. All I'm seeing is black. I can't see you guys. Yeah, you're doing the bandwidth. Well, Jay, go ahead and go into what you was what you found, and then I'll and then I'll just yeah, talk to yeah, you. yeah. Then now Nick already mentioned the first encounter in '34. Now, yeah, did we ever get a physical description on that? I was curious. I didn't catch that. Yes. yes. Um. The uh. Bush, uh the bushy tail, standard. long fangs. Uh, three toes, and the toes are like razor sharp. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kangaroo-like legs How big? Uh, that enable them to have phenomenal agility and speed, <laughs> and they can really jump. I mean, one witness uh, said that it, it jumped like twenty feet. How big was it? Short it ears. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me just now. Short, pointy ears, and. Uh, you know, very, very hairy body, but it, and it, it looked like it had like a, a dog-like snout. Yeah. And it does resemble a baboon. So, I mean, you have all the makings of that, but like yeah. I said before, we really don't have baboons running around the United States. So what is no. this creature? Well, what in is saying that, I, I'm going to say this and go to Jeremiah. The first report, uh, recorded import of monkeys from Africa came on a slave ship in 1799. Wow. So one year before 1800. So right. we do know that, you know, as, as, as people came from Africa and they brought slave ships, rich people was bringing cats and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then I'll say that, and then I'll get into it here in a little bit uh, later. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. The first official quote unquote official sighting was in 1959. Okay. A couple by the name of Boyd was driving through. Um, geez, I can't even remember. Already, driving through Salton, Virginia, according to their account, an ape-like beast attacked their uh, their daughter. Yeah. Wow. Attacked her. I can't even read this. Oh, Wasn't it their daughter was in the a daughter? Pauline described the attacker. Yep. Yeah. And it had light taffy colored hair with a white. With a white uh, stripe running down its neck and abdominal region, yeah, uh, it stood on two legs, well, mu well muscled legs, and uh, shorter front legs 
or shorter front arms. How okay, you so you said think? a white stripe running down his chest in the abdominal region, right? Running, excuse me, running down its back and running down its chest. Okay, let me show you something right here. I know, Jeremiah, you can't see it, but yeah, Nick will be able to. Uh... And I, rem I remember uh, reading that report somewhere, and it did say that... Um, that the uh, devil monkey actually scratched. Oh, there you go, a baboon. But it actually scratched yeah, yeah. the side of their car. Well, and that was the okay. In. There's a second second part to this encounter. Two nurses were driving home in a convertible. They had the convertible right. top up. Yeah. And this freaking part of my language jumps jumps out, jumps on top of their car, mm -hmm. and this thing rips the convertible top right off the top of the car. Mm-hmm. And, and as lucky. I recall, they were lucky to get away unharmed. I mean, they were lucky God. to get away. Exactly. Oof. And it, uh, in the same area around the same time, someone else described seeing an exact same creature hanging upside down with its tail wrapped around a tree limb. Now, Jay, what Gary has up on the screen here, because you can't see it, is a uh, he put up a few pictures of a baboon. What okay. differentiates a baboon from a devil monkey Right yep. there is we're staring right at us is the uh, flesh like red reddish nose and the white on both sides of the nose. That's yeah. a big factor between what a baboon is and a devil monkey. Well, in, in saying that there are different as you've seen the other picture, it didn't have that. This is a certain variation of the baboon. But yeah, the, there's the mandrill and the drill. Yeah, right. and, you got yeah, the mandrill. Yeah. The the main reason I pulled these up is the white on the back and the and the chest. And, yeah. and okay. another thing too, I could pull up video after video after video and show y'all everything y'all are talking about, attacking that way, jumping on the top of a car. And just like Nick was saying, baboons are very, very aggressive. And that is typical behavior of a baboon. But go ahead, keep going, Jeremiah. Yeah, and in 1969, John Green looked into this phenomenon uh -huh. because there was a report of a long-tailed monkey beast that eyewitnesses acclaim was hanging around Brit uh, in a certain area of British Columbia. The creature is said to have left a series of distinctive three-toed, razor-sharp claw marks on trees attributed to them. Now, in 19... I think it's 1973, Lauren Coleman also investigated the case in which three black bushy-tailed giant devil monkeys slaughtered livestock. And then in 2016, um, people came home to see this thing. They walked in their house, and this thing was on top of a black lab ripping it to pieces. Yep. And, and I, I recall that case, too. I... I don't know if it was the husband or the son got a uh, ran to get a camera. And when he flashed it, yes, the thing ran out of the house. I, I don't know if yes. it was the husband or the son that did that, but either yeah. way it did uh, retreat. Yeah. It retreated. Um, but yeah, it, it's just crazy. I mean, recently it's 2006. I mean, and excuse me, the nurse, when I said the one wrapped around the tree, that wasn't with the nurse sighting. That was with this one in 2006. After this one attacked the black lab, someone in the same neighborhood saw another one wrapped around a tree limb upside down by its tail. Right. You know what amazes me, though, is that they they were seen in areas that were, you know, that are considered to be cold regions. Yes. Like Alaska, Alaska and Western Canada. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of reports that I went across that they were, you know, up in that area in the uh, 1960s. They've been reported a lot in that area. And there yeah. was a report. I I didn't get a lot out of it, but it was reported in a newspaper in 2017. So that's oh, like wow. the, that's like the most recent report. And it actually fit the description that I, I brought up on this other research, you know, from in uh, South Pittsburgh. Uh, area and uh you know the other witnesses in virginia so and, I, it just amazes me i mean if it, it's so cold up there and they're up there and they're also in virginia where it's warm in new mexico and they're well, in lbl again, too they've been seen in lbl haven't they that i didn't i, I they, they were seen in south pittsburgh tennessee so maybe that was it didn't mention lbl but maybe that was the area 
know, well, I, just, I, I heard that in passing from somebody. Well, LBL, right. if if you'll remember, one of the uh, uh, Nick, especially uh, one of the more how would we say obscure stories about the LBL uh, attack on the family, right? And, they they describe yeah. it as you know we hear both dog men and we also hear this you know like a devil monkey with a snout. Yes, uh, but there has been uh, sightings of devil monkeys all over LBL. You know. Oh yeah, that's it. Uh, Jeremiah, you got uh, any other sightings? Uh, and I'm glad y'all are bringing this up because I've I've read all of these and I'm going to add some to it. You no, know, the re the most recent sighting I have, guys, is 2006. Okay, now. Like I was saying before, and, and guys, of course you guys know, I bring more of the natural thing across to this. I really believe that what we're dealing with here is a more generalized term of devil monkeys for multiple species. Uh, for the simple fact of the wide range and the biodiversity of the sightings and what's going on. But the one commonality thing we have is the aggressiveness of the certain, y'all notice that every, uh, report that had an attack they was all predominantly uh described the same thing and hey gary uh, excuse what? me we're having a video problem right now what uh is it happening on your screen or just on mine because you're what? you're fuzzed out and i'm fuzzing out now i'm the yeah, only I one can't. fuzzing out you're fuzzing out on me i'm just fine yeah i'm blinking i don't know I what is going either on. One of you. <laughs> well you got yours turned off well anyways um I think that the, the uh, like we showed the picture of the Beast of Seven Shoots, is more of the Gugway. I think that is myself personally in my research a variance of a Sasquatch. Yes, I do too. Uh, we we do. There is a a sighting and report out of southeastern Oklahoma in the late nineties, early two thousands, where a guy got attacked by a chimpanzee like creature, oh. and he he shot it in the forehead with a, a pistol. And it quit attacking him. That was like one of three chimpanzee-like attacks. These things was five feet tall, four to five feet tall, built like a chimpanzee, look a lot like a chimpanzee. So, in saying there that, go. I fixed it. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. Something was going on uh, here. I was blinking all over the place. So, with wow. the reports that y'all have, I'm going to just take it a little bit. I'm not going to take the cryptid side reports, but I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of, like I was telling you in 1799 the first recorded baboon import with a slave ship and it was they actually reported it it was part of the manifesto of the mm -hmm. uh, of the slave ship um here's the big one for me of course me being in uh oklahoma texas texas is has a very well-known story of the monkey ranch okay. and i've got it pulled up here uh i'm going to go ahead and cite the uh Locate not the locations, but where I get the information. And one of them is the Wall Street Journal just a month ago. Oh, wow. And uh, this is... Guy... <laughs> Texas County is fighting 43,000 monkeys. Ooh. What? what? Dilly, yes, Dilly, Texas, uh, back in the 2004, 2005, I think it was. Let me pull it up right quick. <laughs> They wow. imported, now you're talking about cold weather. Dilly, Texas, they imported 150 snow monkeys, Japanese snow monkeys. And those are the mm -hmm. monkeys you see up in the mountains of Japan and the snow in the hot. Right. Is there a reason they did that? I mean, well, I, I'm getting there. This, the, the South Texas rancher Edwin died and rescued a troop of 150 snow monkeys and brought them to his ranch in Encino, Texas, 40 miles south of Dilly, which is mm. southwest of San Antonio. After learning their deadly fate from his daughter, who was part of a Japanese research as a primatologist. Uh, he took several years for the wild monkeys to adapt to the South Texas climate environment and soon thrived in their new home until Dryden's death years later caused the monkeys to be relocated on two occasions. They never did catch all the monkeys because they was actually reproducing. Now, so, what year was this? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, 1997. All right. So actually 95 to 97, they was relocated in 95. They did a National Geographic, did a documentary on them in 97. He imported them in in the 90s. That's one incident. Now that's the, uh, the famous incident we call the Monkey Ranch and they've had sightings all over that area of Texas. Even when I was stationed at Fort Hood, which is probably 100 miles north, west of there, 
Uh, it might be a little more than that. We was they was talking about monkeys in in Northwest Texas, but here's here's my whole thing. If he imported them in, we don't know. Just like with Florida, with all the snakes and the stuff and the hurricanes, chimpanzees in Florida, which I'll get to that in a second. That's just one incident in Texas in the nineties. This was the the famous one. Okay, La, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. like I said, uh, this is one month ago. This is from the Wall uh, Wall Street Journal. So I mean, we can. <laughs> This is very accredited uh, news. Texas bought, yeah, Texas bought land in Barcelona County looking for solitude. Then they heard about the monkeys. Last year, 12 billion biomedical research firm, a $12 billion biomedical research firm quietly bought more than 500 acres of land in a sleepy corner of the country and shared a plan to house up to 43,000 monkeys on the property. Oh my God on 900 acres how are you keeping them in on the property though on the property yeah this this is a there i mean a fence is not going to keep them in they'll climb my, that in a second my point exactly <laughs> oh my god uh let me go back up and so they actually was giving it's there it goes it's being honorary just to give you an idea the manifest manifestesto uh, 19,000 monkeys, half a dozen states. They imported them from half a dozen states over the physical year of 2022, according to the U.S. Department of Agricultural Records. And primates, and this is what got me, primates and other research animals are a vital part of the biomedic enterprise, enabled research on human diseases and treatments. Primate models have been essential to understand the virus's cause of AIDS, uh, pandemic COVID-19. So any of these monkeys that are getting relief, that are getting loose you might as well say they're a biohazard yeah uh, tuberculosis Definitely. they're talking but their uh river emailed a preliminary forty three thousand two hundred primates to the county and i have to show this you was talking about the fence how are they going to keep this fence in keep these in this is the stuff that i'm talking about so this is i guess where i'm going with this is this explains a lot of the recent sightings that's the fence that keeps it in, keeps them in. Oh my God, come on. Is that an electric fence? I see warning signs. I'm wondering what that's no, about. It's just, it does look like it's electric on top, but even at that, that's not going oh. to keep. That's. And this is this is a fence that the county, at the, at the bottom of the deal says, how one county is fighting 43,000 monkeys. Can you now, enlarge here. that, Gary? Top right over there on the picture? There you go. Will that enlarge it? That's about as big as we can get. Yeah, we can't. What is that? Can you make out what that's private says? property? No soliciting. But you see right here. Oh, yeah. Who are you going to solicit to? You can see uh, <laughs> right here the insulated post that they were using for electric. And it yeah. looks like the top wire here is electrified. It, well, it looks, yeah, it looks like it runs through the top. Yeah. But even at that, that's not going to keep the monkeys. No. And that's the whole thing is they're saying, let's see, called a meeting, discuss maintenance of the private road. I was just reading where they said what kind of monkeys they had in there and how many numbers. I was trying to find that. This is a big long deal. I don't want to go yeah. Over but anyway, so we're talking. They they were saying something like uh, snow monkeys. There was. <laughs> let me find that again. Which look like baboons, don't they? Snow monkeys. There was, yeah, nineteen thousand monkeys. There's they actually named a certain amount of baboons. There was all kinds of. Maybe it was in the other all. Sorry, folks, I am way off my game tonight. But I mean, like the photos you threw up before, the uh, the mandrel ba baboons have the mm -hmm. white and the uh, the fleshy nose. The regular baboons do not have the white over there at all. Yeah. Right. Uh, but these devil monkeys, they look totally different, really, than both of them. Well, that's except that's for the I mean. for the fangs. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. You have howler monkeys, which have the long tails. They also have the white. They have, uh, you have, you know, there's various and that. Here's my whole point. If they're bringing in these kind of monkeys into Texas, you know, they're doing it elsewhere. Sure. Let me pull up one more internal projects. Now that was Texas. Florida. This is. Yeah, the skunk apes, apes down in Florida. Yeah, which they're saying is is more of uh, Sasquatch and stuff like that. So Florida has a 
what would you say, not a diverse, they got uh, invasive, sorry, invasive species invasive. They are yeah. established breeding species colony of, well, they're saying pythons, but croc uh, crocodiles, sorry, I'm way off my game tonight. I've been fighting a lot of sickness. Uh, chimpanzees. Uh, so they're saying here that in Dana, Florida, chimpanzee farm in 1948, that far back, uh, 70 individuals escaped and they lived in a small grand for small mangrove forest for over 70 years. A average chimpanzee can live 40 to 60 years and have a right. kid every, have a baby every two, two or three, uh, Macaws, macaque. Sorry, that's the one I was thinking of. The long tail and the and the yep. big teeth. When you was talking about them hanging upside down, uh, that was the one I was thinking of with the white on them. But the the whole point that I'm getting at is we do rhesus macaque is what I was is one of my velvet okay. monkeys. rhesus monkeys, right? So each one of these are established breeding colonies in Florida due to escaping during certain hurricanes and everything else. Rhesus macaques, velvet monkeys. Uh, common squirrel monkeys, crab eating macaques, chimpanzees. They're saying since 1950s, there has been over 3,000 sightings of chimpanzees in the uh, Everglades. Wow. It's, good, it's good to note that the 1950s, all of the 1950s, very high uh, incidence of uh, how can I put it? Experimentation on monkeys yes. in, in the fifties. That was, that was the big year and then, uh, or the big decade actually. And then in the sixties, uh, all these groups started to pop up and they were trying to protect them. And, uh, that's yeah. when they went to rabbits and, and mice and rats. And, uh, you don't ever want to see what they do with these poor rabbits and mice. And no. rats. You're talking about the, the chimpanzees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, in 2009, I don't know if y'all remember, uh, Sandy Harold died from a chimpanzee attack, a wild chimpanzee attack right. in, in Florida. So we, we know they're there. And we also know that even with like the, the Burmese pythons and stuff, with the weather changing, uh, uh, we don't, you know, if they're slowly brought in, I mean, humans, <laughs> these things can find structures just like we are. I mean, look at how they interact with people in India and everything else. They're in their houses. They're in their barns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these things could spread just like the Burmese pythons. They have, there's a, that, that Burmese python uh, has are extended into South Texas and all the way up into the uh, big thicket area and into Southern Oklahoma. Wow. They, uh, they matter of fact, they're not for sure if it was a, a wild breeding Burmese or something that got lost, but they just uh, killed a 13 foot Burmese python in Norman, Oklahoma, about 20 miles South of me. Oh, but the, the whole thing that I was that I was getting at is we've definitely I wouldn't even call this a cryptid. I'd I mean you can call it what it is, but I would say this is like the the Wahila. To me, this is this is one hundred percent. We know we have chimpanzees in America. We know we have mm. all this other. And you give somebody that's terrified at night and a chimpanzee being four or five foot tall and, and it, when they they've got fangs too. You know their teeth are they'll bite your fingers off in a heartbeat. It, this thing coming at you in it in, in the nighttime, but I really think that this is just a conglomerate of a lot of different sightings. I think the the one that gets okay. me is the Canadian, though. I don't see how these, like y'all saying, how a, a primate could live in the Canadian wilderness. No, I, I don't see how it is at all, unless unless they were lower area and they came up as they adapted, and that that would take generations. Right. Yeah. You know who brought over some really exotic animals, including monkeys? And uh, I think he did bring a mandrill. In 1850, Joseph Bonaparte, yep. that's the uh, oldest brother of Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon. He actually moved to, Uni to the United States in 1815 um, to the uh, Delaware River area in Bordentown, New Jersey. Yep. And he had quite a collection of exotic animals. I mean, it was a big deal, like you said, Gary, with uh, the rich people of the time, you know, in the seven, late 1700s and 1800s, they would come here and they would bring exotic animals and they, yeah. you know, just thought they were so cool. And uh, 
what it also states is that um, Mr. Bonaparte, when he would get bored of certain animals, he would just have his, uh, you know, zookeepers over there, just let him out. Yeah. So yeah, you can imagine, you can imagine he got bored with his tigers and they said, just let him out. Let him, let him go. Cause he had a, um, an area in there that was uh, ringed with a, um, how can I put it? A brick wall, <laughs> an eight foot brick wall. And they would just, okay, go, you know, go out the back door, go into the wilderness. Cause it wasn't built up the area where he was living at the time. Yeah. So, I mean, where they traveled, they traveled. I mean, I don't see how they could replicate because there's not a lot of them unless, unless it was a male and female tiger when he let them loose or, or the monkeys that he let loose, the snakes that he let loose. I mean, yeah. the list goes on and on. I mean, he got bored really quick with them. He did have a, a couple of black panthers, you know, so, you know, there we go. But I just don't see how they can multiply you know, over the, over the years and, and everything and still be seen today. Well, but in a, in a situation like that, I could see it not happening, but like in Florida where they have so many, oh, God, yeah. they could, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, I mean, prime example, everybody knows about right. the tiger King in in uh, Oklahoma, you know, he had, yeah. even when the FBI raided his property, he had a manifesto and this is his legitimate manifesto. We don't know how many he did on the black market. Uh, they, they couldn't, uh, when they went in and moved the animals from Winniewood, Oklahoma down to uh, Thackerville, which is about a mile and a quarter from my main <laughs> research area. Uh, they couldn't account for over 78 animals ranging from tigers, wow. to lions and and cougars bears. oh my I, yeah lots of tigers and bears oh my. <laughs> right. so we don't you know this is just a few that we know of we don't know of all these people that come over and bring oh look at this cute little monkey you know like a spider <laughs> monkey or something yeah and then it gets bigger and they're like well we can try to give it to somebody and we'll get a ticket because we don't have permits so we'll shoot let's just take it and dump it in the woods you know which is what people have done over the uh, decades yeah. with alligators that they buy. Well, they used to do this in the thirties and forties and I think fifties also they would buy alligators, baby ones, little tiny, cute little things. Right. And uh, they would go from Florida where they bought them over to New York city and then mm. flush them down the toilet or yep. throw them in the uh, river. Uh, right. People would bring snakes and just let them loose because this cute snake that was so colorful suddenly is now six feet long. Yeah. The alligators, yeah. when they were growing to be about three feet long, the people decided, mm, no, he's trying to eat us. He's not eating the food we're giving him. So let's get rid of him. And we don't have a fish yeah. tank big enough. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely crazy. Some of the stuff that they do. True, true story that I seen myself. I seen the, the, uh, cell phone footage i have a friend that lives in a little town called keystone florida which is about midways up the uh, uh everglades and he is a bona fide uh her herpetologist snake wrangler and he goes out mm -hmm. and catches you know they they get paid by the state to go catch pythons and you you have to bring them in live for them to register and then because the state you know they're they're really trying to do a study on them and everything else but he, they was driving down the, uh, he says, we're catching all kinds of snakes because them hurricanes at Florida had a lot of people that was collecting snakes. It's easy to get a, I guess, a, a venomous snake and a herpetologist license in Florida and that, that hurricanes and the flood, they escaped a bunch. But anyways, they was driving down the road and he seen a big black snake. And it, he said it was a single lane. Uh, they call them a levee road where they, you know, run across the top of the levee. So it's like a single lane blacktop road. He said the tail was in one side of the, uh, grass and the head was in the other and when they stopped you know it was coming across the road by the time they got up there on foot and his girlfriend was holding the can the phone big youtube moment you know that, that's how everybody's doing it. you can watch the, all the yeah uh, it had already went into the grass well he started into the grass like this and when he did the grass he said uh was almost chest high he said this thing raised up and when it fanned it fanned up as wide as both of his hands it was a king cobra oh no. 14 feet long they ended up catching it but uh -huh. if, if that thing's got loose what about the, all the crates and the kaboom vipers and and, and oh my God. Prime? Uh, well these these snakes <laughs> watched a youtube channel where a guy bred an eastern diamondback to a western diamondback and they take rock pythons and breed them to burmese pythons 
nature's going to find a way. We don't know what's coming out of there now. Well, same thing like yeah. you're saying, Nick, you know, it could happen. Another true story. A certain member of my family, when I was 18 years old, went to Louisiana, bought him a little alligator, brought it home, put it in a stock tank. Thought it was cute until it got up about three or four feet long. So they yeah. said, what do you want to do with it? Are we going to shoot it or whatever? And it ended up coming out of the stock tank and got into the pond. They, oh, that's cool. We'll just leave him in the pond. Ate every, uh, yeah, every right. turtle in the pond. I myself yeah. used to go out there and try to shoot at it and kill it because it got to the point we were shooting at it so much. Of course, there's a bunch of kids with 22s, and he was like six feet long. The 22 just bounce off of him. But if yeah. he seen a human come and he ducked down, they're smart. We didn't, it took like six years to get, we ended up having to sane, not sane, but drag it and catch him and pull him out and kill him. But the, the thing of it, I'm getting at is if, if you take a, an animal like that that's doing it, you take anything with any kind of intelligence of a, a primate or a, uh, which I think a monkey is a primate, aren't, no, monkeys are. No, they're primate. They, are they primate? Yeah. Yep. Considered. These things yeah. are resourceful. Like I said, they they're said, a monkey, not an ape. Right. Yeah. They're not an ape. They're a primate. Yeah. But uh, they're not a great ape or an ape. Not a great ape, right? Yeah, but as resourceful as they are, you know, they could very easily. the 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 one that gets me, like y'all was talking about, is the the gugway or the face eater or the one that's you yeah. know seven feet tall. Right. Th that one. We had said it in a previous episode. I believe that could be a little bit of misidentification. I think a lot a lot of people talk about the bear man, or the bear squatch, and all this mm. could be that gugway with that elongated snout. And just saying, yeah, we don't know exactly what all walked the planet when Neanderthal did. We do know that Neanderthal was taller than we are, had double the bone density that we have. But there's other things that came on this planet, too. It Absolutely. could be a mutated. I don't like using mutated because when you say mutated, it makes you think of, you know, bad things. Evolution, maybe. He evolved, adapted, adapted, evolved evolved. versus mutated. Yeah. Yeah. Mutated yeah. It means uh, the use of some kind of chemicals or yeah, I mean, you know, outside yeah. agents, but it probably yeah. evolved. Yeah, well, due to necessity. Mean, if we wanted to go down the rabbit hole, I mean, if we if we did want to do that, Nick, you know, we've had many a discussion about, you know, maybe Dogman could be a, an alien crossover or something. Could Very be. well, could have done it with a monkey to make him seven eight feet tall. Right. Sure. Yeah, you've also got. I'm just saying, short faced bear. If you take yep. a bear at a certain, when you get up north on the face eaters, because here's the reason I say this, the first place a bear goes for, a cat will always go for the back of the neck, but the first place a bear goes for when they attack, if you're on your face or if he's right here. Yep. Your head. Yeah. Your head. There's yep. the face All the eaters. bears do that. They try to bite you in the head. Absolutely. They, even when you see them go after a seal, it's funny because they, they, they either go for right here at the throat or they'll go right on the snout. Right. And they'll, they'll suck it out. So that would be a physical uh, manifestation of the so-called face eater where they eat your face off. Uh, even uh, like we was talking about the Wahila, how they have certain attack uh, parameters that they genuinely use. You know, how a dog will come in and grab the throat and rip and an animal that big would mm -hmm. separate the head from the body. Well, mm. a bear, like I said, uh, how many times have you heard of, of people getting bear attacked and you look at it and half of their head and half of their face is ripped up because that bear is coming right here. Snap. Right. right. Now, and just a quickie story about the Gugway. My uh, my cousin's husband, who I refer to as my cousin-in-law, he is a First Nations native, you know, Indian. And um, he showed me, uh, I guess you would call it a journal from his great grandfather. Mm. Not his grandfather, his great grandfather, uh, and he had seen a gugway, and his great grandfather was one heck of an artist because what he did was when he got back home, he sketched it. This is how he saw him. He was on a cliff, and he was looking down into a valley which had trees and everything, and this gugway had caught, um, I guess you would you would call it a moose, and. Yep. It tore its head off Jeez. and it's chewing on it. And while he was chewing on it, this man who was young at the time, he was observing it and observing it. And then all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, I guess after, after a little while, he says that the, and, and by the way, he had um, a, uh, a height. 
he 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 believes that it was about nine feet tall because he was judging it by the trees that was around him. He knew the area. He used to hunt the area. So he's saying it was like nine feet tall. It was massive, massive That's shoulders, huge. really yeah. huge, flat face and very sharp teeth. And I, I mean, he was just observing this thing, like I said, from a cliff. And the ending of it is that this Gugway, for some reason, just knew he was there and he looked up. Well, this this native Canadian Indian took off like a bat out of hell. He said, oh, and his no grandfather way. his grandfather wrote all this down in his log, and he didn't stop running. Evidently, he was a very uh, very good athlete because this this fellow just didn't stop running till he got back home, and yeah. it was far away. I'm talking miles and miles. He must have ran over ten miles, you know, according to my cousin in law. And it was noted in his book. And he actually showed me the book. You know, it was a journal that he kept. And he had all kinds of birds and squirrels, bear pictures that he he had uh, sketchings of. And this 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 Gugway looked just like the one that Gary put up before. Yeah. The one I, I had sent yeah. to him. I mean, it's to, to know that. Uh, I mean, come on. There, there was no TikTok or Facebook or That's anything like that. Just fixing the cell. Yeah. I mean, this this man is three generations away from my cousin-in-law. And the man had a wonderful, you know, artist rendition of what a Gugway looked like. So yeah, yeah. they they do have, well, they did have these things back then. And they noted it. Yeah. So, well, uh, apparently we got them now because of the, that beast of seven shoots has never been disproven. And, and to me, having that snout. And, 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 and once again, I have to go back to this biologically. I could see it being like you said, they didn't have internet. They didn't have, how are people in the 1800s and early 1900s, same with Sasquatch talking about it from Canada all the way to Mexico. And even into yeah. South America, they talk about the long nosed now in, in South America. I could, even, I could see it being a, a, a certain, they got that aardvark that's real tall that could stand up next to a tree, but he's not going to eat your face off. Or right. even a three-toed sloth. He's interested in ants and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, at night, just like we was talking about with a dog man, you know, the first thing a, a black bear does when he gets the wind or something, he goes up on the side of a tree and so he can get up and elevate himself and, and see and, and smell. But there's too many stories. I, I'm more apt, and, and I, have to care, I have to be careful because when I'm doing research, I don't like them old stories for reports. They are exactly that stories but i'm more apt to believe the diversity of stories mm -hmm. from you know jeremiah we talk about it all the time we call it yeah. our, across the nation or across the continent this is not continent, connected yeah. then i would now because we have internet we have books everybody has information back then they yep. didn't have information no and and like i said they've been talking about that they talk it's, they've got a different name for it but they can still call them the face eaters from the Nahami River Valley in way northwestern Canada, up here with the Wahilas, all the way down. Now, yeah. I, I agree with Nick up there. It very well could be a, a, a polar bear, you know, because they'll when they get tall, they're you know, eight, ten feet tall, and they'll polar bear. Human. One of the most aggressive bears on the planet, you know. Oh God! Oh, yes. yep. But I, you know, you was talking about Nick about him killing the killing the moose uh nick was you involved in jeremiah interviewing my buddy from canada that watched the sasquatch go after the moose oh our buddy uh from alberta I think, yeah, yeah i think i was on that show yeah we interviewed him too nick yeah uh, yeah yeah after yeah. gary and i did this the, season later the amount of detail oh that's the kind of reports and interviews i like to do the amount oh, that's what i like and yeah. and the emotion that the man has, I, I just, I still talk to him all the time. I don't want to say his name on here because he, I don't yeah. know how uh, into the community. I, he hasn't been a whole lot into the community lately, but the amount of detail. But once again, even the way that it took the moose down, and I'm going to say this, and, and uh, you can go back in the yard. Back, yeah. Yeah. Either the man knows a lot or... He's seen it for the simple fact that that is exactly how an animal of that size and stature in that mindset would take out an animal of that size. That size. 
the biomechanics yeah. of it and the, the being yeah. able to attack and everything. And I just, there's too much to this. And now, like I said, with these, with, I, I believe that 100% we have escaped devil monkeys and uh, the general term. And I believe that it's everything from Janosqua. Uh, I, you know, y'all know about the, the crazy tracks that I found in Southeastern Oklahoma and, and the Cherokee, they got a different name for them. They call them, mm-hmm. a, uh, uh, sometimes I call them a Janosqua. Some people, I think the Cherokee call them a, a Gugway. Or a Genesquatch. And, you mean the ones yeah. that roll in the mud and, and rock? Well, I've always, Person. if you listen to certain reports, they call those rock giants. But yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm talking about the, the general the de- general definition of the face eaters. And I'm going to throw a historical part at you uh, here in just a second to, to back up everything that we've said tonight. The face eaters with the elongated snouts. There's a very popular movie that was made from a very famous book written by a Moorish Muslim ambassador to the north. He was one of the first people to actually go visit the Viking area. Right. The name of the movie was The 13th Warrior. The name of the book is called The Eater. Awesome movie. Yes. But that storyline, they kind of parody. But if you read the book, it's not humans wearing bare skulls. It's elongated faced yes Giants. isn't that the one uh yeah, antonio yeah. banderas yeah. yes it's based yes. on the book the he book was is the 13th eight. warrior yeah the the book yeah. is one of the oldest it's older than the quran wow. <laughs> one of the oldest written books and it's the the way they write it it once again talks about this throughout history even if you look at paleolithic uh paleo how would you say it paleolithic artwork paleolithic, you know, yeah. and the egyptians talk about dog men Now, here's my question. I wanted to get in. I always try to end with you guys on this. Do you think that some of this could be maybe Dogman getting misidentified as a monkey? It's quite possible, yeah. Because, I mean, look at the snout on that thing. Yeah, and the jumping. I mean, we've done all of the interviews of the Dogman jumping. Uh, I I read an interview the other day of Dogman jumping from tree to tree, you know, like in the movies. And it's feasible. Yeah. Well, I had a yeah. uh, couple years back, I, I, I went to the same area with my team twice. Uh, we took uh, six wheeled gators through the uh, area because it was uh, tons of snow uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, northern Pennsylvania. And we did find tracks and it did look like dogman tracks. It was in the snow. Uh, we also found claw marks. This is the part I'm trying to get get to. We found claw marks on the trees that went up the trees and went across the trees to several trees. And, you know, before we actually lost it at at one point, Uh, you know, so, you know, that's not a bear jumping from tree to tree. No. And a bear claw marks are closer together. Black bear claw marks are close together. These claw claw marks were really wide. So, you know, you know, what do I take from that? Yeah, I mean, it's, my, my, my take Nick, from that is it's something like like a dog man. Nick, it's, it's funny you say that because you guys know it, and I'll go ahead and announce part of it, but I'm not going to give out all the details. We are in doing a active investigation, my team right now, of North Texas, of a current family in a certain area that has multiple sightings of dog men. I have got some pictures and video of something, on all fours in the middle of a field as big as a damn horse. Mm-hmm. And then the video, he literally stands up like this and walks into the woods, which very well could be a bear. I'm just saying, but we also have pictures and I can send them to you of claw marks on a tree like this. And they're not a bear. They're not a cat because a cat will always mark clawing down. It's pretty much common sense. Even when they climb, these are like this and it's almost as wide as my fingers and they're deep into that birch tree. Right. My, wow. my first thought was somebody had built a fence and there was barbed wire and, it, and they pulled and it had grew into the tree. Well, I haven't been on site yet because I've been sick, but I sent my partner, my best friend, y'all know who he is. We'll, we'll call him Ranger Rex because yep. he likes, because of right. his career, he keeps his uh, identity secret very like you nick very extensive as we know investigative and criminal background mm-hmm. criminal investigator background forensic background but he said it ain't bar bar it's claw marks i said is there any way that it could be faked 
He said, if they did, they did it about 15 years ago with a machete. So whatever this is, has been on this area for a long time. Right. Doing the research, found out there's Indian burial ground right down the road. So Nick, here we go into the, the things that we talk about that I don't, I have a hard time believing is the spiritual dog man or the, that whole thing. But it, it's, it's got to be happening because we've got evidence of it. The, the yeah. guy's ex-military, the, the landowner's ex-military. He works for a private security company right now in, in, in Texas. I'm not going to say the name of the company. If this was to get out, he'd probably lose his job. So we know he's sincere. He took a pot shot at this thing with an AR-10. Five rounds. Uh, he well, said, I know who you're talking about, about, Gary. Yeah, you've, I mean, you've talked about him in depth. Matter Nick fact, does Nick, too. Five shots, seen fur fly, and it just keeps going. It's just, yeah. that's one of them cases of, it makes me wonder, because here I'm trying to be on a physical side of things. But in saying that, back on my, my, my thing, If the Janosqua is Dogman, it would only be one variant of the Dogman. There's right. multiple variants of the Dogman from creditable witnesses. Same way yeah. with the Devil Monkeys, the Janosqua. So how do we explain 300 years, over 300 yeah. years, an Anglo-Saxon American man, European man being right. on the North American continent with documented history, written history? Yeah. Then you have First Nations for three to 5,000 years all saying the same thing. But yet, and, and it's funny because we discussed this with, I discussed this with my dad earlier today, but yet we have no 100% inconclusive solid physical evidence. I have to go with what Nick and you say all the time. Sometimes things just don't click. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry. We got to remember guys though, I mean, it, it could be something that's indigenous to you to the earth. It could be something that's interdimensional. Interdimensional. So it could yep. be something that's alien from another planet. I mean, just those three things there, not to mention the paranormal, you know, the spiritual. I mean, the Native Americans in the United States say that Dogman protects their uh, burial grounds. Burial grounds. All right. But is it a spiritual Dogman? I don't know. I. Uh, can't talk to anybody to find that out. Uh, you know, that's that's all gleaned from books from down uh, southwest. You know, I've been into libraries and poured through books yeah. and newspapers and stuff just to gather information. And, you know, so it's just not enough, just not enough. But to, to bank on what uh, Gary was saying here, uh, yeah, it's 300 some odd years because back in 17, was it 1789? Up in Michigan, the loggers yeah. were attacked yeah. by a dog man. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking 300 years plus. But that's uh, just in North America. Yeah. Just in North America. Yeah. It goes and back what to I was, what I did, what I was able to see, because I was allowed to go walk through the caves, is drawings on the caves by uh -huh. Native American you know, Indians. And this is going back a couple hundred years. You know, they Shit, on the walls. There's there's drawings in drawing. California, they're 10,000 years old. There's a drawing at, of a dog man on, on there. Look you know, at it's the, like, my God, what is this? They wouldn't allow me to take a picture of, uh, you know, of it. I mean, that no, was, of course not. Look that at was the, forbidden. Look Couldn't at even the, bring my the, cell phone in with me. The the totem poles from, from all the yeah. way from the Seneca Indians up there where you're at. And right. yeah. All the way to the Pacific Northwest. You know, people think this is a figment of, of imagination. Well, I'm sorry. N Nick, I trust you with my life. Literally. <laughs> We've built the same blood and the same mud. What you've seen was not a figment of your imagination. No. no. I'm, I'm sorry. Nobody can tell me what I saw, you know, or tell me, oh, you didn't see something. Yeah, you know, I did. And it was not a bear. The question is, I know what a black bear looks like, and even if it was a big black bear, it would have short, shorter arms. Short arms. Yeah, this yeah. thing had this thing was down past the knee area, so yeah. you know, and the naysayers, you know, naysayers, you know, keep your opinion, that's fine. You know, you can say what you want to say. I really don't care. I know what I saw. Nobody, uh, that's, can. same here, Jeremiah. I trust you with my life. Nobody. Absolutely. You know what you've seen. I know what I've seen. Now the you question know what you is, saw. 
we know Absolutely. what we saw. Question is, what did we see? What did we see? Yeah. I, yeah. Now, I'm going to be honest. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I'd rather go see a Sasquatch all day long. I don't, y'all yeah, can take him dog man and keep him up there where you're at. I, you know, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just, I don't know what it is about. Gary, it's just the weirdest looking thing that you ever did see. Now, if you ever saw one, I'm telling you, it's. Like I said, at the time, Gary, I, I didn't know what it was. I, I knew what a werewolf was, but yeah, this was really different. Well, that's that's on the devil monkey thing. Now, if you, you seen yours in fairly in bright light, you know, your headlights was hitting it. Right. If you saw that thing in the dark from the side, you might think that it had been a baboon or you might have think that it was now the one thing that's in common with yours with the beast of seven shoots if you look closely at the beast of seven shoots some people say it's a deer some people say it's a dog some people say it's a, a child but if you look at that picture i can pull it up again it has something in its arms yeah it looks like a piglet or something or something it. yeah and that's yeah. another common thing of of all of them is grabbing a pig and taking it in their arms yeah. or, or, you it was consuming a deer when you yeah, said it had a deer hindquarter in it yeah uh, it's, yeah. it's right claw and you know i couldn't see the back so i can't tell you if it had a tail i didn't see its left arm because it was it was bladed towards its left looking that way and i always wanted to ask you how broad was that oh my god uh i would say cl close to the shoulders close to four feet yeah Oof. i so mean it I estimate the body weight of this thing being seven feet, seven inches. I estimate the body weight to be 650 pounds. This thing is or big. Plus. Like, yeah. Big boy. That's, that's, that's not so uncommon for something that large because I've oh, seen, no. I, I've seen brown bear that were seven feet tall or eight feet tall and they were 1200 pounds. Well, you know, I mean, very the, big. The, the national uh, black bear that we talked about there out of North Carolina, Jeremiah, that uh, Travis. Yeah. Right. Yep. He was he was what seven hundred and fifty pounds, and when they stretched him out, he was like nine feet tall. Nine World feet tall, nine bear. feet. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really odd for a bear like you know a black bear. But and, and once again, and what you're the whole the thing I'm going with is was this Nick is you're trained to recognize, label, and respond. Right. Detail, minute detail. I know the training you went through. I went through the same thing, and that's probably the reason. I remembered as much as I did, but that thing, if, if you was just seeing a glimpse of that, or you was just seeing this, the whole thing I'm getting with the devil monkey thing is if you was just seeing a glimpse of that, or if you just seen something like the beast of seven shoots, it, it, you could have described it as a, the first thing that pops in your mind is a bear man or a, or a bear squatch or a dog mm -hmm. man or a, or a devil monkey or something right. like that. But some of the devil monkey, sightings that y'all are talking about i believe 100 percent is along the lines of what you because they're describing the same thing you've seen nick the other sightings the jumping on top of the car scratching and stuff like that the only thing that gets me is the three toes because there is not oh, yeah. a single primate on the planet that has three toes three Sloss. toes dude. yep yep the whole, the whole thing with that is, like I was saying, multiple reports just brought under a general consensus of a name. They think of Devil Monkey. I honestly believe that half the reports, the early reports y'all was talking about, are Janosqua, Face Eaters. Whether they're... Dugway, you mean? Dugway? Dugway. Janosqua. Yeah. They, it just depends on the... Once again, it depends on the... Uh, it's the same thing, but different name. Different uh, name, yeah. Different area, different language. Different area, different tribe. But once again, what I'm getting at is... And, and I'm not going to call it misidentification anymore. Now, what I'll call misidentification is if somebody calls something that turns out to be a bear, like the black bear report that got report, Nick that you reported, and it turned out to be a black bear. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to call that misidentification. What I'm going to call that is generalized report identification for the simple sure. fact. We're not for sure if it's a genosqua. We're not for sure if it's a dog man. We're not for sure exactly what it is. We all know that we the people are seeing these things. Final thought for me all my stuff coming through with this sickness and everything's got me really thinking and doing this research. We've discussed this in public in private. I think that I'm going to start bringing it up a little bit in public. What if these things, like Nick said, y'all, I've done, y'all done converted me. What if these things do both? 
What if they're physical and spiritual? And spiritual. Yeah. There's a lot of reports of it. Yep. The Native Americans, they walk yeah, both. For one. A foot in both. My grandma used to say a foot in both worlds. I... I've done you know, you know, the, the devil monkeys are saying has three toes and uh, um, it could possibly, since it has three toes, also, it could be a rhinoceros because they have three toes. Yeah, but I don't see. <laughs> now, Just there kidding, are, but it does have three track toes. Wise, yeah. Track wise, there are, you know, ostriches have three toes. We discussed the, uh, the yeah. emus, uh, llamas. Look, they could look like they're having three toes, but just like those i was just i'm glad you brought up the the three toes again the tracks you know those tracks that i followed for three quarters of a mile that had four toes and the claws everybody's telling me that's a dog man or a genosqua well here's the deal is it a dog man or is it a damn genosqua what is it i know i followed these things for three miles or three quarters of a mile and then they just faded out literally dog man tracks of- gary have been reported five or th- or four well, and a lot of it would depend on how their toes are. It might a scout. Right. He'll stand certain ways and one toe. Right, would, right. It would go up. And that's what I was wondering about a monkey. If, if they're standing, you know, you, you, you just say they had three toes. They might have just saw one track. We don't know what position the, the animal was in. We don't have enough information. But I can say from personal experience of tracking, I followed something with four toes with claws, and it wasn't no damn bear because it was bipedal. There's no bear that's going to step in the same tracks for three quarters of a mile on different terrains. Right. And it walked out in the middle of a field that was about 50 yards you know, and, it with, had grass and stuff in it, but no big trees. We're down in the middle of South Explain that, though, to everybody, Gary. But Gary means by well, it would step in the same tracks. The the the, the hands, the forward uh, legs, and then the back legs come up, stepping into those. Yeah. And so on It's average, not going to happen uh, continuously. No. It might Andre, happen every five steps, but no. I fo- well, I was, I was just fixing to say, I followed a black bear in... Uh, or was that northern wyoming and he had a, a weird gait to him and he was hitting on the right side about every seventh to tenth stra- track but the left side this mm. was every track it looked like me with four toes and that, that was the thing is this thing was heavier than me because i wasn't even imprinting it now we do i have to understand that the substrate could have been a little bit damper because these was not very fresh tracks they was probably right. two or three days right. old. The, the gait of a bear, though, is so odd. I mean, they, 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 kinda, are, and they wobble and kind of wobble things, when they walk. I mean, it's just yeah, weird. Thing. This thing had a stride. I, I, I have so many people get into me about stride and step and all this from the heel of the left foot or the left, whatever you want to call it, to right. the heel of the right was five and a half foot. Call that wow. a step, call it a stride, call it whatever what you heck? want. <laughs> and like I said, I got in the middle, and this is what, what quirks me about this. Now, I have tracked foxes. I've got video of foxes climbing on fences and doing all crazy things to hide. I've heard of Native Americans backstepping on their own tracks. This thing, I counted when I came to the edge of the track. I had two guys with me and big boy in here, and he don't, that's the reason I know it was an older track, because he didn't, you know, he didn't alert on it. But then I come to the edge of the track, I started looping backwards on myself every 10 foot and I could not see any anomalous tracks for the whole length to the tree line. So if this thing stepped on its tracks backwards, it did it perfectly. Well, the only thing that it could have done is in the air. Or maybe yep. jumped, and if he'd have jumped to a tree, and this is Nick, me and you talked about this. I asked yeah. you, dog man, uh, but it, and and this is where I'm going with this. It would have been a forty to forty five foot lunge to a tree. Oh. I never thought to go check the trees for claw marks or something, but if you think something that's got an average six foot tall man has a stride of about three and a half to four foot, right? The world record long jump I, I used to know his name back in the i think it's actually been beaten jumped f- from a running position over 30 foot standing long jump is over 14 foot yeah and 
you say a six foot tall man with a three foot step, well, this thing's got a five and a half to a six foot step. He's even taller. And we all know that these animals are built different than we are. It very right. easily could have jumped to a tree yeah. and lost. Yeah. But, but that, once again, that's, how do you that's a heck of a jump. We, we was talking about that today. You know, I've heard people say ghosts don't leave tracks. Uh, sure. I've heard it both, both ways. Sometimes they do. Well, how do you explain? And, and I'm not going to explain it that way, but they're, well, they stepped into a portal. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that its tracks disappeared. Yeah. What I am going to say is I found over 68 tracks, full prints that we got pictures of and should have. I need to do a presentation on that. And three quarters of a mile of trails of either even grabbing trees and, and breaking lenses. And then it stopped in the middle of nowhere. You don't fake that. I'm sorry. No. We was 26 miles to the nearest town. Nobody even knew it was in the area. You don't fake that. That's not a bear. We all three of us agreed there wasn't a bear. Question is, we know it was there. Same with all of our sightings. But what mm -hmm. was it? We've got to figure out what that is. Well, what is. Jay, any uh, anything to close on? Because we're out of yeah, time. Yeah, I'm 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 up in the air on this one, guys. To be honest with you. Really? What yeah. I, I I'm hearing what you're both saying, and I'm just uh, I'm I'm. I'm up in the air. I don't know. I gotta I, think about I'd it. Say it's, it's, it's written up in the books. The the smaller reports are probably baboons or or chimpanzees. They, they, they probably are. I just got. I gotta. I gotta think about it a little more. Yeah. The one thing that we did have a lack of in these reports. Yes. Know, for yes. lack of better terms, was it the woo? Yeah. Every report we covered, I didn't hear nothing about no. <laughs> nothing. No. Nope. You, Nick, and the ones they all came across. Nothing. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, Jay, we're out of yeah. time. All right. Well, gentlemen, it was a good show. And uh, for our listeners out there, thanks for tuning in. And we will see you again next weekend. See you later, my brothers. Talk to you tomorrow. Gary, Jay, take care. Everybody, have a good night. Have a good night. God bless. Bye-bye.